Once again, the fundamentalist Christian has a plausible explanation on how Noah preserved all living things on his ark during the Great Flood. And once again, it really doesn't stand up to evidence as we debunk yet another fable taken as fact. With education and literacy, usually comes an increase in common sense. Simply put, people tend to think. They think a lot more than they did a few hundred years ago. They don't just listen to the church tell them how things are and then continue on with their merry lives. And one fable that finally had to fall by the wayside from the Old Testament was the myth of the Great Flood and Noah's Ark. Or at least should I say it's fallen by the wayside for everyone except the Christian fundamentalist who still adamantly clings on to the tale, even though by all fronts, historical and scientific, the evidence is telling you it simply didn't happen. But when a group is backed into a corner and they're fanatics, the defenses become Hail Mary passes into the end zone of the ridiculous. But let's just assume that all the animals were right there in the Mesopotamian area for Noah to gather on his ark before the Great Flood. And that assumption itself is in the land of non-reality and will be the topic of a further video debunking the flood myth. Now understand something, if your defense of every explanation stating why this couldn't happen, backed by reason and reality, is that God used miracles, God used spells, God used magic, God changed things after the flood, there's not much I can do to reach you. This channel is about evidence and reason, reality and facts. Now the first part of this video isn't a slam dunk of proof, like my prior video that showed that the ancient Hebrews clearly stole the flood story from the Sumerians, but we're going to label it highly improbable, even if all the land animals were present to get on the ark to begin with. Okay, first part, all the animals approaching the ark. Do you really believe they just lined up in pairs and walked up that ramp into the ark? that the lions and the gazelles obediently went to their cages. I'm sorry, I don't believe that. I can't prove that that didn't happen, just like you can't prove that I didn't lift my car over my head. But if I tell you I lifted my car over my head, you're probably not gonna believe me. But now let's say they're in the ark. Do you have any idea how much food it would take to supply those animals for a year? As well as the water. I've only taken six animals here. Just six. A pair of elephants, a pair of horses, a pair of cows, a couple giraffes, two lions, two hippos. Then I took just the averages from a general Google search of what they eat in grasses a day. And of course, for the more carnivorous animals, there's the problem of supplying meat as well. For just those six animals alone, you would need almost 400,000 pounds of food. And for those six animals, they would need about 62,000 gallons of water from the day they stepped in to the day they stepped out on Mount Ararat. So for those six animals, could he have done it? Well, the area he lived in did have irrigation at that time. And yes, I guess it's possible he could have done it, but I wouldn't bet money on it. But here's the part one man and his family couldn't have possibly handled. There weren't just six animals. There were a couple million. Now the creationists, of course, have an explanation that they basically pulled out of the sky. Since Genesis states in the story of Noah's Ark that each kind of animal should be brought, they mean only one member of the animal family. In other words, one simple dog covers the entire canine family, including the fox, the wolf, the jackal, and that God set the evolutionary hereditary factors to reproduce to these many different species from the origin family once they left the ark. And then they will further back that argument that they know this to be true because it correlates with the Bible. And this is what organizations like the ICR or Institute of Creation Research does. They take something that's not scientifically valid at all, state it is valid, and say it is valid because the Bible matches it. But the problem is, science doesn't match it. We have gone great lengths to study genetic sequencing and how long it takes a new trait in a species not only to arise, but maintain its hold. 
And according to Joseph Ueda, who hails from Oregon State University, that time frame is at least one million years. And this seems to be agreed with the rest of the scientific community that I've looked at as well. And the creationist, with his scientific inquiry that isn't backed by anyone, states that obviously, all the species from the canine family re-evolved in 5,000 years. This is mathematically impossible. And this is the cumbersome problem that the creationist fundamentalist has. Noah and his family could not have fed, watered, and maintained all the animal and plant life for an entire year inside of a 510 foot arc. So they attempt to reduce the number of animals that would have actually been necessary to be in this arc to continue God's original creation. The problem is we can absolutely slam dunk that this couldn't be possible. So on this topic, the only way it's scientifically possible is if Noah had to contend with a few million species in his ark. Once again, the Christian fundamentalist has spoken an untruth to try to cover up an absurdity of the Bible. But there's another problem that most lay people, fundamentalists or atheists, don't even consider. If Noah and his family were the only humans to survive the Great Flood, they don't have the genetic diversity in their genes to produce the differences in humans today. So in terms of debunking the validity of who and what was actually in the Ark, you can't account for the diversity in humans today. It's hard to believe that they actually gathered hundreds of thousands of pounds of food and water because the rainwater outside certainly wasn't enough. Not to mention how you fit a few million of species in the Ark to begin with. A magazine from Smithsonian suggested that an Ark could maintain 2,000 to 50,000 species. So for that to be correct, you would have to accept the creationist theory that those species evolved back to their original levels in 5,000 years, which is mathematically impossible. And we haven't even gotten to why all the animals could not have possibly been in the Mesopotamian area to begin with. But this episode was yet another thrust using reason and reality into that heart of ignorance to debunk the probability of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood yet even more so. If you'd like to read a novel about what I think Christ would be like if he ever returned for the apocalypse, check out my novel The Second Fall. Link is in the video description below. And we'll see you next time as we use that sword of reason and reality and thrust it into the heart of ignorance.